Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. We must be coming up on flu season because that sermon is very much about you better remember to wash your hands. And so there's a part of me that is, guys, please remember to wash your hands. Really, truly, this is not permission to not wash your hands. Kids in the church, this is not permission to not wash your hands. Though most of them are in Sunday school, which is probably good because it's an invisible church. And so we're reading the Song of Solomon in the beginning, which is absolutely stunning poetry. But it is literally about what you think it's about. And um, there will be all sorts of ministers out there who will be like, no, 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 it's about the love of God. It's about what you think it's about. And that's a good thing, um, but I'm not going to preach on it. So if you have any questions about that being a good thing, talk to me later. It's a good thing. It's all a good thing. Um, but we're going to preach about the gospel, just because you never know. Um, okay, so gospel. It goes something like this. Um, the Pharisees, so there are different sects of um, Judaism groups. And the Pharisees are kind of on top. Um, they're the most popular ones. They have a lot of the rule of the temple. Um, but a large part of what they do is um, they, in, oh my gosh, you think we understand bureaucracy now? Guys, guys, we learned from the best. We learned from the best. Um, and the Christian church, we love bureaucracy. We love it. But we ain't got nothing on this. And would you believe that Jesus comes and says bureaucracy is a bad thing? What? And we're like, no, that's fine. We like it, though. We like it. So we're going to reinvent it, and we're going to put your stamp of approval on, even though you don't approve. It's fine. It's all fine. So um, one of their big things is they have a lot of the law and the rules. And some of the law and the rules are very, very strict. And believe it or not, um, when you get into Leviticus, and gosh, I mean, you think the Song of Solomon is dead. Getting into Leviticus gets into all sorts of awkward conversations. But there is a reason for the law. And the law is really about how to live um, in community, how to live in groups. And so there are um, a lot, there's a lot of purity law because we want to maintain the health of the community, so, you know, awkward things where, you know, bodily fluids, ew, ew, those spread disease, guys, because, ew, and so we have a lot of rules about that, we just have a lot of rules. Um, one of the big rules is um, caring for the outsider and the alien among us. <clears throat> Funny, we don't talk about that one as much, isn't it? Huh, that's a sermon for another day. Okay, but there is a reason for the purity laws. The thing is, with us as humans, we like rules. We really, really like rules. And we especially like rules when we're inflicting them on other people. Because the best rules are the rules that y'all need to follow. I mean, me, I'm a rebel, so rules don't apply. But y'all need to follow the rules. And the Pharisees are really good about enforcing the rules. And the thing is, when we get so obsessed with rules, we forget why the rules exist. If you've ever heard someone quote Leviticus, I'm guessing you've heard it in a context about what those people over there should be doing. But they conveniently forget the rules that they probably should be following. But, you know, who wants that one? Because I'm a rebel. So, here's the trick. Jesus is hanging out with the disciples, and they come, and they're like, dude, um, why aren't your friends washing their hands before they eat? Now, don't get me wrong, this is not permission for you not to wash your hands. You should wash your hands. But it's more that they come, and they're like, uh, mm, did you notice y'all aren't following the rules? Did y'all notice you are not following the rules? And we really want to point out that those people over there are not following the rules. Gotcha. It's a beautiful gotcha moment. Don't you love gotcha moments? I love gotcha moments. Gotcha. And Jesus is like, seriously? 
seriously. You don't even know why that rule exists. And that is the point of the gospel today, is what's the point of a rule if we don't even know why the rule exists? The point of the rules is to live in community with health and love and all those good, fun things. It is not about gotchas. It is not about gotchas for those people over there. It's about how do I live in a way that is right and holy? It's not about the gotchas. The guys, we love gotchas. And so he really steps back and he says, oh, hold on, hold on. We need to step back. There are two sermons here, really. There's one, um, this concern about the gotchas, being really concerned about other people following the rules. But then there's the second part of this, which is how do we do this? How do we live like this? Because we are so concerned about doing the right thing that sometimes we don't even know how to live. And that's what this is really about. Because it's not about the rules. Because we want to know that if I follow these rules this way, it's going to work. And I'm going to be righteous. And I'm going to be saved. And I'm going to be good. But that's just following the rules. And that's a black and white thinking. And any three-year-old is really good at black and white thinking as long as it doesn't apply to them. I mean, we we want everything to be fair. That is not fair. Have you ever noticed that we're only worried about things not being fair when it's in our direction? Convenient, isn't it? We're not so worried about things being fair or right when, you know, other people are on the line. We want it to be fair. It's got to be fair. It's got to be black and white. There are rules that should be followed. You're not following the rules. But that's not really the point, is it? Because here's the deal. If we really work on this, if we really work on our stuff, we don't have time to be worried about other people following the rules. Because, guys, I think we're all great humans, but we all have a lot of work to do. I mean, I do my very best, but guys, you've dealt with me for a long time. I've got a lot of stuff that I need to work on. And we all do. And so it's a lot easier to focus on other people's stuff, isn't it? On what is fair and what is right and those other people and their rules. Because when we're so focused on that, we don't have to focus on our stuff. But the message of the gospel today is we need to focus on our stuff. We've got a lot of stuff we need to work on. And when we're doing that, we don't have so much time to worry about whether or not other people washed their hands before they came to the table. I mean, I hope they did, but really I'm more worried if I didn't. If I did it for the whole 20 seconds, that you're supposed to do it with the right temperature water that you're supposed to do it, and now you're not supposed to use antibacterial soap because that creates super germs, so now I have to worry about what soap I used. Guys, there are a lot of rules. And if I'm focused on my stuff, I don't have time to be so worried about y'all's stuff. So there are two messages that Jesus has today. One, to the Pharisees, um, it is super hypocritical that you are worried about other people's stuff when you aren't worried about your stuff. Because our stuff is worshiping God and following God. We don't need to be worried about everyone else's rules. Two, how do we do this? How do we live a life like this? Because here's the thing, we're so worried about outside stuff and blaming outside stuff without realizing that it's within stuff. So there's a, if you wanna get really technical, there's something called um, an external locus of control versus an internal locus of control. And we as a culture are very, very concerned about external locus of control. That means it's somebody else's fault. Um, And I'll just use an example because I have small children and I get this all the time. Um, Why did you do that? Well, they made me. I mean, she did this and I got angry and therefore I had to do this. Huh. So you had no control whether or not you punched your sister. No, she made me mad. She had it coming. 
And look, I've got two kids. Sometimes she did have it coming. <laughs> I'll just be honest. But you can't say that because we all know. So we as a culture love this idea that there's some force outside of us that forces us to do things. And yet, the stuff that we have to deal with is all internal stuff. It's our stuff. It's our jealousy, it's our anger, it's our rage. It's all those things. It's our addictions, our needs for these things. And until we can say, that's my stuff, that's not that stuff out there. There's no one else to blame for this stuff. And maybe, yeah, someone did something that made me angry. Y'all, I get angry all the time. If you've dealt with me for five minutes, you know that I get angry all the time. And yeah, sometimes people make me really angry. And sometimes they do really stupid stuff that makes me angry. But how I handle that is my stuff. I can't control all that stuff out there. But I can control how I deal with it. So once it becomes anger, once it becomes jealousy, once it becomes those things that actually are troubling, then that's my stuff that I've got to work on. And that's hard stuff to work on. It's so much easier to say those people over there made me do that. Can I tell you a fun little story? Um, I work in a middle school. I don't know if you knew, knew that, but I do. Um, and they are a beautiful collection of goat humans. They're kind of awkward. They smell funny. Um, they don't really know how their bodies work. Anyway, I have a, a student, and I am teaching a class. Don't Talk to me later about the fact that I'm teaching a class. It's an ugly subject. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm teaching a class, and um, this student is very, very concerned about how other kids behave in class. Like, to the degree where he keeps a list of their names <laughs> and check marks next to them. And it really frustrates him that I do not do this thing because, guys, I'm a counselor. I don't give about your behavior, frankly. I'm here to make you function through life. I am not here for check marks and yelling at you. If you want someone to do that, administration gets paid twice what I do. They can deal with that. Okay. But anyway, he's very, very, very concerned. And he yells at students pretty frequently. And um, like I said, he keeps a list or whatever. The problem is he worries so much about this stuff that he doesn't actually do anything in class. I mean, I'll say, okay, so um, we're going to play this game to work on this. We're going to do this worksheet. He won't participate. In fact, he refuses to even take the test. That's right. I'm a counselor, and I give you a test. Talk to me about this later. I have feelings, strong ones. And so we get to the end of it, and he comes in my office, and he yells at me for, like, really an hour because he's very angry that I have not punished them the way that they should have been punished. And I didn't even pay any attention to his list. I said, well, no, but um, I also didn't get on you for the fact that you didn't participate or do any of these things. Should I have punished you? Well, no, but that's completely different. Is it? Is it? And guys, that's us. We are that way. We're so worried about what's going on out, out there, what those people over there are doing, that we haven't even learned the math. We refuse to participate in our own stuff that we need to work on. But we really want there to be a punishment, don't we? I mean, we really want there to be a hellfire and brimstone. Like, really badly. Just not for me, because that sounds unpleasant. But, I mean, there are some jerks out there who need some hellfire and brimstone. I mean, is that kind of our thing? We're so worried. We're so worried. And so the message today is this. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Focus on washing your own hands. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. 
please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We believe in one we God. We can't wait to meet you. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.